Hey everybody, it's your girl Bunny. To all of my returning subscribers, hey, how you doing? And for those of you who are new to the channel, welcome, subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss any post. Everyone kick your feet up, relax, as I give a full episode recap of 90 Day Fiance Before the 90 Days, season four, episode 14, entitled Hard Habit of Break. I'll have the recap with photos offset to the side and I'll have my discussions and review at the end. Minute marks are in the comments. It's all coming up next. A lot of these scenes, of course, are moving forward from the first look episode. So we are at the scene where, of course, Vara is at Jeffrey's house. And of course, Jeffrey is completely thrown off by Vara's arrival. And Mary is shocked as well and asking, why is she here? Why are you here? And of course, there are back and forths between Mary and Vara. And Jeffrey is saying, look, I haven't talked to you in weeks. The fact that you just popped up is just blowing me away. I thought that me not communicating with you was a clear indication of where we stood in this so-called relationship. I proposed to you. You told me no. And of course, Mary is still frustrated and asking, why is she still here? Why is there even still a conversation? It's as if Jeffrey is considering maybe letting her in and talking. And Mary wants to know, why is she here? Why is she still talking? I'm confused. And it forces her to tears and wondering why he's even giving her the benefit of the doubt to even speak and Jeffrey doesn't do anything to defend Mary he's just standing there still baffled and he says look I, I don't know what else to do and Mary is just confused about why she's still there she just can't stand it she's forced to tears she's talking to production saying he's not even defending me he's not even saying that we're in a relationship and we're moving on and just leave and she gets her stuff which is flowers and a card that he gave her and she leaves and I don't blame her one bit David and Lana are on their quote-unquote first date and David is super excited but Lana with her facial expressions her body language doesn't seem like she's having that much of a good time and you could tell she's really uncomfortable David is asking her would you like something to eat would you like something to drink and she just wants a cup of coffee that's another indication that look I don't plan on being here too long a cup of coffee is another <laughs> red flag they use a translation app to communicate back and forth but it's still pretty awkward because they can only say so much at one time he even says that hey i'll get you a tutor and do whatever it takes for you to speak english and she wants gifts and things from david and the producer on the offsite conversation has asked how much money has David sent you over all of the years and she doesn't even want to answer the question they take selfies and David is like a kid in a candy store he is super excited and he can't wait to be more passionate and Lana again looks really uncomfortable with these subtle hugs that he's giving her with these creepy moans as he's touching her and giving her hugs and David questions why did you give me the address why did you give me the wrong address and she expresses that she gave him the wrong address because she didn't feel safe. And to production, Lana says that that's mad. That he searched around for this address looking for me. And for my safety, I thought, thought that, that was very smart that I didn't give him my real address. But looking for me was absolutely insane. David then lets her know that he hired a private investigator. Um, but he hired that person to find out more information because he was so curious but once the private investigator told him some information that he fired that person and he didn't want to believe what that person researched so shockingly after that situation with jeffrey and mary he doesn't even go after mary he lets her leave upset and torn but he invites varia to come in and talk and varia wants to know What's up with Mary? And Jeffrey is explaining to her that we are trying to move forward, learn more about each other and develop a really deep relationship. And she did a complete 180 in her feelings. And now I'm com conflicted with you because you turned down my proposal and now you're here. And you didn't even get a hotel room and you're telling me that you want to stay with me. And he wants to know that 
you want to be back in my life all of a sudden and you changed your mind, so I'm confused. Vaya's side of the story is, hey, you proposed to me and you left and I feel that I'm coming to get you and we can start and try to make this right. I don't see me popping up as a bad thing. I wanted to surprise you and I want us to go forward. And at this point, now she's in tears because she's really passionate about what she's saying. Darcy spends more time with her sister and saying that she's moving on to bigger and better things and she wants to take more time for herself, more self-care. They purchase some flowers and we see that they've gotten the flowers because they want to leave them on their eldest brother's gravesite. He passed away from a rare cancer that he died from and they're just talking about how he was so great and he wouldn't want either of them to be in a relationship that wasn't meaningful, that wasn't important, and that that person didn't treat them with any disrespect. So they spend time thinking about their brother, thinking about their sisterhood, and what they can do to just be better to themselves before bringing anyone else in theirs. Later on that evening, David and Lana go out with one another and they're taking a nice walk and they're focused on taking a lot of photos together because this is something that Lana will need for her visa. And David says to production that, hey, in order for me to move forward with this person, she needs to show me more affection and I'm not getting it. They go to a bowling alley and David says that I want to make a bet. If I get a strike, I get a kiss. And Lana doesn't look too comfortable with that, but she's really crossing her fingers that he doesn't get a strike. He tells production that, hey, years ago, I was actually a championship bowler. So hopefully I can pull out a few strikes this evening. He tries over and over and over again. And with every roll of the bowling ball, Lana has this uncomfortable, oh my goodness, please don't let this guy get a strike. He finally gets a strike and goes towards her to get this kiss to her mouth. And she's trying any and everything to force her face to move to the side. So he can't kiss her in the mouth, but he can kiss her on the cheek. And she says to production that she's not having it. And in order for him to get anything from her, she feels that she needs to know him a little bit longer. And David is frustrated with that because he feels that, hey, we've been talking to each other for over seven years via chat. How much more time do you need? And it's very awkward. And she never really moves in for any true affection. So Stephanie is back in New York. That was the best uh, accent I can give you. I'm a Texan, but she's back in New York. <laughs> and she's saying again that she was disappointed that Erica didn't meet her at the airport to greet her with final goodbyes. But why would she, right? You said goodbye to her. But she gets there and she rejoins with her mom, her mother's friend, and she sees her doggy. So that brings her some good joy. And once they get into the car, she never gives true details about the true intentions of her trip. She does say that she was there with Erica and met Erica's mom and dad and her mom really is kind of picking up on some awkward vibes and not really sure about why Stephanie Stephanie is giving her such drawn out answers like so we met and I met her mom and we went shark diving it's really this awkward answer to everything her mother is asking her and Stephanie lies again and says that they're just friends and one time when she was there one night they had an argument and people online think she's one way, but in person, she's someone else. And her mother agrees that, yes, you're very conservative. And I can see how a lot of people would think you were one way, but you're really another way. So, again, Stephanie cops out and doesn't say or talk about the true intentions of the trip with Erica. Usman and Lisa, they get ready for a reception later on that evening because Usman or Usman Usman's family is arriving for them to have dinner and to spend more time because their wedding is just in a day. It's coming up. So they want to spend more time as a family. His eldest brother arrives with his daughter and they have traveled seven hours just to be there to meet Lisa and join in with the celebration. And he's surprised to see that Lisa is much older than him. 
And he really can't understand how they're so in love by just talking online. So Usman is concerned because of Lisa's previous behavior. And he's really hoping that she doesn't behave inappropriately while his family is there because he doesn't want to be embarrassed. And Lisa needs to keep in mind that his mom can change her mind before the wedding. So they escort the family to their room. But Usman's mom is eager to pray and she wants Lisa to join them. So she washes her feet and hands because it symbolizes washing away the sins, the sins from your hands, the sins from your feet. And you have to be pure before you pray. And Lisa, surprisingly, is just like they're washing their feet, but they're washing their feet with this hose and the water goes in the toilet. But their purpose is just to rinse their hands and feet and the water is going in the toilet. They aren't actually using toilet water and surprisingly Lisa agrees and does the same she washes her hands and she washes her feet and joins them in prayer so that was very flattering and the fact that she sacrificed her thoughts about it and joined them in prayer as they go to dinner Lisa feels that she wants to talk to the brothers and tell them about Usman's behavior and how he's very stubborn per se and Usman does have a look on his face like, oh, I can't believe she's bringing this up. But she wants to tell the brothers, hey, this is the issue with your brother and he needs to get this situated before we get married. Usman does say to production that at that point he did feel very embarrassed and insulted that she would bring that up in front of the brothers because he thought that they were moving forward and he doesn't want to involve their relationship with their thoughts. But when he does and she expresses that she wants to talk about it, the eldest brother says, well, you know, culturally, it is that the man leads the household and the woman is the one that is the womb and the provider of the home. And Lisa is insulted by that. She keeps cutting him off, being very, very rude. And then his other brother, Muhammad, tries to jump in and says, OK, he says it very calmly. It's our culture it's our religion and maybe we shouldn't go back and forth and she's cutting off muhammad and she's cu cutting off his eldest brother saying that no 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 no. this is the way it needs to go i'm american this is not the way i do it and in typical lisa fashion say it with me you guys she cusses everyone out and walks away she walks away every time and she's walked away this time unfortunately and you can see the embarrassment her cursing and walking off and the our eldest brother tells Usman, look, she's very controlling and this isn't really good. And this is something that's not flattering that she's getting upset, not listening, being very disrespectful. And he is embarrassed. And he's saying that it's highly likely that, ooh, there may not even be a wedding now. It's the last day that Avery is with Ash and she has to return to the States. And they both look very sad and that she has to leave. And Avery is expressing that, wow, I don't know how long it's going to be before you get this visa and for you to come see me. So I'm just really sad. And Ash confirms that, hey, I'm really sad that you're leaving. I'm going to keep you posted on what's going on with the visa. But I'm really taking this relationship seriously and I can't wait to see you again. And he says to production that he really has a connection with her and feels that very soon he will propose and they'll continue to work things out as a family. But they do understand that their children are very young and family is very important. So their kids can't just jump around and move and go to a totally different country, a totally different setting and be away from their parents. So they hug and they reconfirm that it's going to be hard. They're going to miss each other, but they really, really want to make this work. David and Lana, they take more and more pictures and every opportunity David gets to take a photo, he's taking a photo. Photo of our first date, photo of our first walk, photo of us holding hands. And he's just going on and on and on about Lana and really, really doing whatever he can before he goes back to the States. When the production asks Lana, how do you feel being next to David? Her response is warm. 
which I found that very hilarious that that's the best compliment that she could give. But you can tell that there's no connection at all between the two of them. There's not any compassion. There's not any intimacy. There's not a lot of holding hands. Even the hugs are awkward. Well, David, he's talking about seeing a future with her, proposing to her, but there's just more information that he needs. He keeps hugging her and giving her these creepy moans when he's hugging her. It's just really awkward. And you can tell she's really uncomfortable. David says in the translator app that I need more intimacy from you. I need more affection and invites her to his hotel room. But Lana responds and feels that it's too early. She feels uncomfortable. And once again, David is not too happy about her response. He thinks that she needs to show him some affection before he takes her to America and so forth. So there's this big uh-oh and awkwardness once again. Jeffrey and Varya, it's very awkward because Jeffrey expresses in the car on the way somewhere that he was supposed to go out with friends at a bar and have a good time with Mary. But instead, this same evening, he takes Varya instead, which is really awkward. And he wants to take her to see his friends all of a sudden. When they arrive at the bar, Jeffrey's friends are in shock. They're confused about who is this new person and where is Mary? Jeffrey says, hey, everyone, you know, I was supposed to be here with Mary, but this is Varya. This, she came all the way from Russia and she's here with me and she came on a surprise. And the friends are like, is this the same person that declined your proposal and now she's here? Wait, wait, I don't understand. When you got back, you were heartbroken. You said you were completely done with this person. You were moving on and you and Mary were going to move on and try to get to know each other deeper because you've known each other for years. Like what is really going on? And Vanya says, you know, I didn't say no. I just said not now. And the friend says, well, you can't say not now without saying no and so I don't get it not now and no how do they differ and Varya says you know I'm not giving up he proposed to me and you can't just switch off your emotions from being in love with me to wanting to marry me to coming back here and being with this person and Jeffrey tries to defend himself and saying I didn't even know she was going to arrive. This is as much of a shock to me as it is to anybody else. So I don't know what I want to do about it. And then all of a sudden, we see Mary pop up. And Mary does a surprise of her own and says hello to everyone. And of course, it's this, uh-oh, what's about to happen? And that is the end of the episode. Now it's time for my thoughts and review. I am very, very upset with Jeffrey. It's as if he's confused and doesn't know what he wants. And one moment you said, I'm completely done with this woman. I'm done. And then you bring in someone else's feelings in wanting to get to know them without closing truly another chapter in your book. How wrong and misleading of you, Jeffrey, to say yes to Mary, knowing that she likes you, knowing that she wants a relationship with you. She indicated that before you left, you are truly, truly just thinking about your feelings and being very, very selfish. You wanted to be loved so bad, Lee, you didn't care where it came from, and she's very evident <laughs> it's very evident that she's the default unfortunately I hate to say that but she was there in your time of need and you used her you used her for your benefit to feel some sort of way instead of getting your thoughts and your feelings together had Mary not been there let's just say had Mary not existed what would you have done when returning to the states from Russia would you have reflected on your life or would you have just been upset and wanted to work things out with Varya I'm really really curious to know if that would have been the case when it comes to David and Lana unfortunately I feel that Lana is an actress a scripted actress with this show because it just seems very odd 
of a lot of situations, just like I think it was a scripted situation with Varya coming, popping up to Jeffrey's house. Because what a coincidence that of all the days for you to show up and see Jeffrey, he's there and he's mic'd and so is Mary. I wasn't really too shocking to me that happened. And also Jeffrey had dogs and they didn't bark at this stranger. Felt they mm, to be kind of kind of awkward so it was evidence the doggies gave it away that they were comfortable enough for varia and the co- and the camera crew <laughs> it's evident that they were there before and they know that that there are no fret threat no barking no jumping nothing um also that lana and david david is clearly out of touch and not knowing that You guys were in a relationship. You paid to speak with this person via chat service. I don't know if it's just that he's just not connected with social media in life or that he is an actor and really taking advantage of this situation and the show makes it very, very hard to believe. Stacy and Darcy both need to take a moment with self-care Darcy seems to me as if she's still stuck on Tom. She just doesn't want to admit it. Also, with Stacy, what's going on with you and your engagement? Are you moving and proceeding forward with that? Darcy seems to me that she's the same as Jeffrey. She doesn't want to be alone so badly that she's not seeing that every situation she's in was a bad choice. She wanted to be in relationship so badly with the previous gentleman, and he really didn't want to go there deeply like she thought. Same thing with Tom. One thing that I can say is that of all the reactions that he's had and all of all the jerk things that he's done, he did say that he really wasn't the settled down type. And the issue with Darcy is that she probably felt like she could change him into this committed monogamous man and that was a mistake on her half unfortunately when it comes to ash and avery i really really love seeing happy and i really really love seeing things work out for other people but with these two it kind of seems a bit forced maybe ash is tired of that play of life and wants to settle down with someone I just don't think it's Avery. Their situation is so complicated considering their children, considering the distance. I really see this relationship to be highly unlikely, unfortunately, Um, especially when it comes to Avery. She has several fathers that are of her children, and you choose to have a relationship with someone that's so far. I am glad that they both agree that they have to take things slow It's just the fact that they're so far away kind of has me like, eh. And also Ash's behavior doesn't match what he says. He says that he's thinking about Avery, wants to be with her only. But a lot of communication concerning his feelings and women that he deals with on a day-to-day basis is a red flag. And the fact that you're not a professional relationship coach, well... In the world of psychology, anyone can call themselves a relationship coach. He's not a documented or certified anything. So I take that back. Anybody can say they're a coach. Okay. But he's giving these false entities just based upon his opinion, not on research, not on documents or books he's read. He's just venting his ways of thinking on women only. Maybe if it would have been courses for men and women, I would have seen it differently for this couple. But it's the fact that it's only women. He also gives private courses or sessions. It just seems kind of awkward. And it just seems that maybe he wants to have his cake and eat it too. But then again, I don't know this person. I'm just basing it on what I've seen. <laughs> Let me know what you think. Subscribe and hit that notification bell once again. And follow me on Instagram at the same profile name, official bun underscore E. Stay safe and check out those playlists and binge watch. Until next time, bye.